You know what? I'll give Pierre Dorian some props. This trade is not bad. The Ottawa Senators have traded away forward Nick Paul to the Tampa Bay Lightning in exchange for forward Mathieu Joseph and a fourth round pick from the Tampa Bay Lightning. Now, at face value, it's not really that big of a trade. Joseph is a depth forward, middle six, bottom six-ish territory for the Lightning. You have Nick Paul, who is a middle six, bottom six territory forward for the Ottawa Senators. They both have 18 points this season. Nick Paul has it in 59 games. Joseph has it in 58 games. They're both pretty much the same type of player. Except there is a little bit of a difference here. Joseph is making $700,000 this season. He will expire as an RFA. And it's been quite documented that the entire qualification process for the RFA rights would be somewhat of a problem for the Tampa Bay Lightning. Meanwhile, you have yourselves Nick Paul, who is making himself $1.3 million this season. It is expiring in 21-22 as well. This contract is also being salary retained. The Senators are retaining 44.5% of his cap hit and remaining salary. So if you do the math on that, I mean, where is it right here? There you go. Why was the 44.5% retention important for the Bolts? They just added $11,750 in a net cap hit and now have $4,916 of cap space remaining in their LTIR pool. Here is the update from Puckpedia, and it's kind of funny how that works out. They're technically under the cap still, with this move being done with the acquisition of a Nick Paul who was going over to Tampa Bay. And if you really wanted to look at the logistics of it, I mean, Matthew Joseph is a guy that if I wanted to go out there and say he's going to become a little bit better, I don't really know if I'd be wrong in that assessment. He's 25 years old, so he does have some time to grow still, and he's been playing in a relatively lower role with the Tampa Bay Lightning. Going over to Ottawa, this will be a brand new opportunity for this guy to maybe showcase himself off at a higher level of play. Plus, the Ottawa Senators could probably afford that RFA negotiation, whereas with Nick Paul, there was the entire conversation about the Senators not wanting to go out there and give the amount of money that Nick Paul wants. Paul is kind of in a position where if you want that Barclay, Goodrow, Blake, Coleman style, I mean, we've said this a ton over the past few days with guys like Brandon Hagel and Tyler Maud, etc., etc. Nick Paul is kind of that territory mold right here. And so for the Tampa Bay Lightning, if they're really going out there and going all in, this move makes 110% sense. This is not a move for next year. They're not going out there because they think, oh, we can re-sign Nick Paul because the Sens were not able to go out there and re-sign Nick Paul. This tweet from Pierre Lebrun sums it up pretty nicely. Mathieu Joseph's arbitration case this summer was going to be an issue for the cap challenge Tampa Bay Lightning. They probably wouldn't be able to qualify him, which would make him a UFA. So really, in Tampa's eyes, this trade is a pending UFA for a pending UFA, and they also like Nick Paul's versatility a bit more. So for the Ottawa Senators, you guys are going out there and trading away Nick Paul for a guy that plays sort of like Nick Paul, but he's a little bit younger, a little bit less developed, etc. And you have yourselves in a negotiation that probably would go a bit smoother than the Nick Paul negotiations were just earlier this week. For Nick Paul, he's going over to his Stanley Cup championship team from the Ottawa Senators, so that's going to be a big boost for his morale. We're going to see him in the playoffs suiting up and hopefully doing some damage. You can let me know in the comments all your thoughts about this trade. I hope you enjoyed this Vrsha Scholz 9 and bye.